Bear with BearIndependent.com. Today is the 11th of March, 2022. And we're going to do the brief. I know many of y'all have brought up that the audio quality seems to be suffering here lately. I'm looking into that. I don't have a good answer, but I'm working on it. 11 March 22, Bear Independent Brief. Mariupol was attacked and is, quote, on the verge of a humanitarian catastrophe amid dwindling food supply. Lesson for you, don't be caught amid dwindling food supply. In one day, a maternity and a children's hospital in Mariupol was bombed, killing multiple women, doctors, and one little girl. And in Zaitomir, two hospitals were destroyed, including one children's hospital. So far, the verified attacks on Ukrainian healthcare facilities add up to 24. Is this tragic? Yes. Why is it being reported in this way by the global media? Because these are violations of agreements as to how war is to be conducted. For example, the Geneva Conventions. You can't knowingly attack medical facilities. And so that's why this is being brought up. Russian troops continue, uh, and shall I say, again, we see the building efforts to get a, a consensus to a mass approval from the constituency around the globe, us, the people, to say we've got to go do something. We've got to go do something in Ukraine. You see... Uh, People, politicians all over the world now are starting to clamor in this way. What does that patch say, Bear? It says, rub some dirt on it. Everything stops bleeding eventually. That's what it says. I'm going to get my pot holder out for my coffee here. It's already starting to steam. Russian troops continue to advance on Kiev, or Kiev, if you are internationally astute. And the town of Cherniv has been isolated. Ukraine has lost all contact with the Chernobyl power station, which is being held by Russian forces. In Kharkiv, at an institute that houses an experimental nuclear reactor, it caught fire after being shelled. Reporting is that morgues are overflowing and the shelling continues. There's no way to hold proper burials for the dead. Bodies are being placed in mass graves to stave off sanitation issues. Reports continue to tell of lines of evacuating vehicles still stretching for miles, escaping civilians being killed by shelling or bullets, and infrastructure being intentionally destroyed. Needless to say, the sentiment against Russia's leadership is deep in the tank. Businesses across most industries are dropping Russia like a hot potato. Fast food and retail companies, financial companies, Automobile companies, aviation companies, tech companies, including Amazon and Apple, energy companies, hospitality companies, and so much more. Biden sanctions are drastically raising prices for consumers, but Biden called the skyrocketing price at the pump, quote, Putin, Putin's price hike, end quote. So much for this administration taking responsibility. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was part of their messaging that they would take responsibility and there'd be great transparency. That's cool. We should ask Hunter Biden what he thinks about all this. How hot is that cup? Look, it burnt my glove. That's how hot. Last week, the International Criminal, Criminal Court said it would be launching a war crimes investigation after 39 countries requested it. Again, this is to build an international mandate for direct action in Ukraine against Russia. And I'm not saying that what's happening in Ukraine isn't bad. What I'm saying is this is likely going to become the catalyst for what will probably become World War III. And that's going to, at a minimum in the West, exacerbate supply chains and cause the price of things to go through the roof. Um, and then it could get ugly from there. How ugly, Bear? I don't know. 
I'm not in charge of any of that, but up to and including as ugly as you think it could get. How's that for an answer? During a joint news conference in Warsaw with Polish President Andrzej Duda, Kamala Harris said, quote, absolutely, there should be an investigation. I have no question the eyes of the world are on this war and what Russia has done in terms of this aggression and these, these atrocities, end quote. What else happened at Kamala Harris's meeting with the Polish president? Part of her role was to reinforce the relationship between Poland and the U.S. after an awkward disconnect concerning the provision of fighter jets to Ukraine. What went wrong in the Polish-American cooperation to provide the aircraft to Ukraine? Poland had proposed to offer, had proposed the offer to avoid making it look like they were arming Ukraine, and the U.S. ultimately seemed uncomfortable joining in so close a conflict with Russia. CNN reported, quote, The dust-up over providing fighter jets to Ukraine ultimately became moot when the Pentagon flat-out rejected the idea of transferring them at all, citing logistical and strategic concerns. But that was only after the awkward episode of Poland's offer to deliver the jets to the U.S., who could then provide them to Ukraine. Left White House officials surprised and to some extent annoyed. Interestingly, China has refused to supply Russia with aircraft parts, at least according to reports. My guess is that'll get done through back channels. This seems inconsistent with some of the country's behavior over the past few weeks in which China has blamed the West refused to criticize Russia, and openly called the country, quote, its most strategic partner, end quote, this being Russia. This may have something to do with China's trade relationship with India and Russia's military relationship with India. But the lines uh, between the axes of evil are beginning to be drawn on the map. If you're on Patreon, you've got the relevant links. A whole bunch of them today. A whole bunch of them today. If you're not on Patreon, you don't. You can find us at Bear. Uh, just go to Patreon and search for Bear Independent. Or there's a link at bearindependent.com. Stand by and we'll see what the news has to say about the goings-on of the day. From RT, EU leaders rule on fast-tracked membership for Ukraine. However, assessment of Kiev's bid to join the bloc, and I love the, this whole thing, I think the word bloc, B-L-O-C, is being used to engender, uh, to call back our memories of the Cold War. That was very much so a term that I grew up with, the bloc. Coffee's ready. Assessment of Kiev's bid to join the bloc will take months or maybe years the Dutch Prime Minister says. The EU has condemned the Russian offensive and pledged its support to Ukraine on its path to European Union membership, but stopped short of fast-tracking its application. Now, Zelensky has said that he's no longer, the Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, has said that he's currently no longer interested in trying to join NATO that NATO drugged their feet and he doesn't want to party anymore. He's also said um, publicly and privately that he's okay with relinquishing control of Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk, those breakaway regions in the southeastern area of Ukraine to Russia. This could be seen as concessions. Um, my guess is Russia is just going to take the entire country of Ukraine and institute their own uh, Russian-friendly leadership in Kiev. And that could be part of why they've been taking so long to get the job done in Ukraine because uh, they want to leave the infrastructure and perhaps absorb a lot of the military personnel and equipment. They want to leave the infrastructure intact rather than just destroy it. It could also be that maybe they're not as good as we all thought they are. And that's an interesting concept right there. Uh, Kiev submitted its EU application in late February with President Vladimir Zelensky asking Brussels to accelerate its assessment of the bid in view of the ongoing fighting in this country. And, and all this is done. The reason Ukraine would want to join the EU is the same reason it would want to join NATO is to have access to backup 
against Russia. Uh, that's the surface messaging. I think the, the, the machinations behind the scenes here is uh, you get into, for example, with NATO, you would get into an Article 5 situation, an attack on one is an attack on all. And what does that do? It embroils us in World War III. The bloc's leaders, EU, debated the issue for hours on the first day of the European Council Summit, convened at the Palace of Versailles, outside of Palace. Convened at the Palace. Oh, the Palace. Well, yeah, we're a, we're a representative republic. We're a democracy, but we meet in palaces while I drink coffee in the woods. Copy that. At the Palace in Versailles, outside Paris, issuing a joint statement late on Friday. They condemned what they described as Russia's unprovoked and unjustified military aggression against its neighbor and demanded, quote, Moscow immediately and unconditionally, end quote, withdraw its forces from Ukraine. Council members pledged to continue to provide coordinated political, financial, material, and humanitarian support to Kiev. As for fast-tracked EU membership, they, quote, acknowledged the Europeans' aspirations and the European choice of Ukraine and said, quote, European Council had acted swiftly, end quote, in passing Kiev's bid to the European Commission to elicit its opinion. However, this is just the first step in what is a lengthy, lengthy bureaucratic process to join the EU, with the statement containing no hints that Ukraine would be allowed to take any shortcuts along the route. Shortcuts along the route. There we go. Uh, so, and the article goes on from here. It's not much to talk about. And then the rest of the reporting today is pretty much drivel. Um, although interestingly, Russia is to brand Meta, AKA Facebook, an extremist en entity and ban Instagram. Uh, and that's because Facebook and Instagram are allowing calls for violence against Russians, those posts to stand on their site. That's fun. That's fun. So, you know, you can't uh, execute on your First Amendment right on Facebook for other reasons. But if you want to call for violence against Russians on Facebook, that's good to go. But their duplicity shouldn't surprise us. We know they're scumbags. Uh, 16,000 foreign volunteers want to fight for Russia in Ukraine. So that could be fun. Uh, there's lots of people that are going to Ukraine to train the Ukrainian Defense Forces. Um, I wish them the best of luck. I've had people ask me if I'm going. No, that's not something I'm currently interested in. What I'm doing is scooping up as much of the inventory for medical equipment as I can so that I have it to make available to y'all so that it doesn't just dry up when we go to World War III in Europe. Um... And then there's this whole bio labs thing going on uh, in Ukraine from RT. Top U.S. spies explain Ukrainian bio labs. U.S. intelligence community has pushed back against Russian allegations of bioweapons labs operating in Ukraine. The heads of the U.S. intelligence agencies rejected allegations of bioweapons research and development taking place in Ukraine with Washington's during the Senate hearing on Thursday. Director of National Intelligence Avril Haines told the Senate Intelligence Committee that Ukraine, quote, operates a little over a dozen, end quote, admitting that the U.S. has, quote, provided assistance, end quote, to the facilities, at least in the past. She said assistance came only, quote, in the context of biosafety, end quote. She claimed, adding that it was, quote, something we have done with a variety of different countries, end quote. Here's a long quote. We do not assess that Ukraine is pursuing either biological weapons or nuclear weapons, Haynes said, dismissing the new allegations as consistent with long-standing Russian efforts to accuse the United States of sponsoring bioweapons and, quote, a classic move by the Russians. This has been making the rounds in the, the prepper space here lately. Don't you know that there's 11 U.S. biolabs in Ukraine and the Russia's attacking them and... Now, don't you know that we talked weeks ago that Ukraine is number four in the world for IT. They have a space sector, unlike many aerospace sector. They're a fairly advanced country and that they were one of the backbone Soviet states during the USSR. It makes ab absolute sense that they have bio labs. And you know what bio labs do? They coordinate. Now, are the people who are coordinating scumbags? Yes, quite possibly. Uh, but not everything 
Not everything is a conspiracy. Willing to be proven wrong in the future, but there's no data right now. Nothing but a bunch of whispers right now that says that, oh yes, that the next super weapon's coming out of these Ukrainian bio labs, and that's why the Russians are attacking it to gain hold of American weaponized bio blah, 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 blah. <sighs> Quit living in the fantasy, people. Focus on reality. That's it for today. I appreciate y'all. BearIndependent.com. Sign up for the newsletter. RefugeMedical.com. Use the promo code BearNation. You'll get uh, free shipping on all of your stuff at the store. Buckets, wound care buckets are in stock and shipping fast. Uh, we've got SOBs uh, coming. We've got a pallet of Bearfax coming. We're about four to six weeks lead time on most of our kits right now. But... Um, you will get your stuff. I promise you that. So refugemedical.com, handmade, made in America, guaranteed forever. Exceeds military specification, 34 lives saved to date. And you can visit us there. Your promo code is Bear Nation for free shipping at Refuge Medical. And I'm telling you, I've, I was on the phone twice yesterday with uh, people from North American Rescue. I've been on the phone every day since this Ukraine war thing has kicked off. And equipment is getting harder and harder and harder and harder to get because it's all going to Eastern Europe right now. And so that in of itself should be an indicator for you. And then if you've been on the fence about getting some medical equipment, get it now. It won't be there to get maybe not even next week. Um, <laughs> equipment in general. Yeah. Yeah. I think the I think the timeline is being accelerated and things are going to get more difficult to obtain and your dollar is not going to be any stronger tomorrow than it is today. To say nothing of costs are going to necessarily have to go up simply because of shipping, because of fuel. Semis don't run on hopes and dreams. The UPS truck doesn't run on unicorn farts. So things are going to get more expensive. They necessarily have to. Uh, the dollar is weakening. There's global conflict. Supply chain is getting all jammed up. So check it out. And then if you need to know how to not die, refugetraining.com. There's like 14 or 16 dates in the store at Refuge Training. Dot com right now and you can use promo code bear nation for five percent off any of the classes at refuge training.com i am looking forward to seeing y'all at the waco class and so go to the waco class if you're in texas central texas or you just feel like a drive the waco class um don't be one of those whiny people that's like that's two hours from me well it's a hell of a lot longer than two hours from me so Anywho, we got Waco classes in Philadelphia. That Philly, the Philly class is as far north and as far east as refuge training is going to go. And so if you are in Massachusetts, Philly's your class. If you're in Delaware, Philly's your class. If you're in New York, Philly is your class. New Jersey, Connecticut, Maine, Philly is your class. Because um, I like these things. And these things are not liked there. And um, I'm too pretty to go to prison. So we don't know. Philly is as far east and north as we're going. So check it out. And then we've got dates all over the country as well. So refugetraining.com. Use the promo code Bear Nation for 5% off there. And if you're interested in a private class for your church security group, your small business, your mag, your team of truck drivers, your... Whatever you may have, uh, sales at refugetraining.com. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for supporting this show. Thank you for being along for the ride over the last 145,000 subscribers that I don't frankly understand. I don't get it, but I feel blessed to be in that position. And I do my best to try and bring clarity and normalcy to the crazy things that are happening out in the world. And, um, I hope that you're blessed by that. I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay. 
Uh, I don't need to be everybody's cup of tea, but hopefully this has blessed y'all. It's blessed me, and I thank you for it. Shalom.